Hello, everybody, and welcome to another One Stop Wrestling podcast. As always, I'm your host, Alex, and as always, I'm joined this week by the dynamic duo of Rohit and Alfonso. Gentlemen, how are you this evening? I'm good. Let's go, Alfonso. Our new tag team, the dynamic duo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love the name. We have to get to a new name for our tag team, but the dynamic duo <laughs> sounds good for me. <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've got to think of new uh, new ways to describe you each week now, I think. <laughs> I've started a trend. Print it on a t-shirt. <laughs> but I, I think that's going to be hard because, you know, mm. there is this player, Lionel Messi, and everybody, when yeah. he plays football, they say he's genius, he's magnificent. And eventually, you're going to run out of adjectives to define such greatness as Rohit and me, you know? It's difficult. <laughs> Comparing yourself to Lionel Messi, that's strong words. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the start. <laughs> um, right, so if you listened to our podcast last week, you will know that we started our ultimate wrestling draft, um, which is essentially we are drafting, we're creating our own rosters and we're drafting any superstar from any company Um, Now, there was a bit of confusion on our Facebook page when we posted it with because we had SmackDown, Raw and NXT as our sort of model. Basically, we are just using that as a model. Um, It doesn't have to just be WWE superstars. We just thought it was easier to use those three brands because there are three of us here. We could have used... AW, WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Exactly. We could could have have used... Yeah, we could use Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision if you want. <laughs> exactly. It was it was simply just a model um, because we thought it was easier. And I guess those three brands have their own kind of unique identity, yeah. which uh, kind of uh, works its way Plus, into our picks. Yeah. I mean, just see it as red, yellow, and blue, I guess, in a way. You could also look at it. <laughs> yeah, 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 just look at it as that. But yeah. maybe, maybe this is just the start. Maybe yeah. in the next yeah. series, we're going to book Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. And we can use all the picks from the first round. That will be difficult, but that will be interesting as well. Could we could do. do. We'll that see. would be the ultimate wrestling draft. <laughs> we'll see For sure. what happens in the future. So, um, so yeah, last week we each had five picks and we did male superstars last week. Um, yep. If you uh, haven't seen the episode yet, please go and check it out on YouTube. Um, we're not going to reveal our picks because that will be giving it away. Um, I will give, I'll, give you a, I'll give you guys a sneak preview. So we'll do our number one picks. So I had Raw. My number one pick was CM Punk. <laughs> Rohi has SmackDown. His number one pick was Gunther. And Alfonso <laughs> has NXT. And his number one pick was Kazuchika Okada. Um, <laughs> so, this week, we are going to be doing females. Now, um, it can be any female from any company. It can be free agents. It can be literally anyone. It's the, That's why it's the ultimate wrestling draft. Yep, and that is correct. Yep, uh, Rohit went first last week, Alfonso went second, and I went third. So this week, Alfonso has got the honour of going first, I will be going second, and unfortunately, Rohit, you're last. Oh, but it always swings around about, isn't it? So it is, and it'll, we'll, mix, we'll mix it up <laughs> next week as well for the, for the tag team picks too. Yep, it's yeah, just but how you we know, wrote it. But you know what? You know what? I took the short straw because I was I'm I'm no no forget I didn't say anything. I mean, did you? Because I think I know what's coming pretty much. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone wants first pick here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so go on, we'll get straight into it. Okay, Alfonso. it was a very it was a very hard decision, guys. You know why? Because when I think about the biggest pop. A woman wrestler has gotten is only one name that comes to my mind, and it's Linda McMahon. But <laughs> but but running running my show with her and being like NXT, like the young guys and everything, I'm not sure I could pick Linda to that role. 
even though I would love to have her. But my first pick, it has to be, it needs to be, Mami, Rhea. Yeah. 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 I think I think we knew where that was going. That yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> that was going to be my first pick. Yeah. So let me note it. <laughs> I think it's a pretty obvious first choice. He has been the standout female wrestler this year. Mm-hmm. Star yeah. power. And, you know, just her aura, the way she conducts herself in the ring, on the mic, everything about her. She's pretty fucking awesome, really, isn't she? But but sure. let's be honest. Let's be honest right now. Like, Rhea could be number one, but she could also be number two or three because the quantity and quality of women wrestlers in the world right now is amazing. Amazing. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah. I think at the end, when we see the rosters, it's going to be a very strong lineup. I think it's the highest in quality that it's it's probably ever been, really, hasn't it? For sure, for sure. Yeah, I would think maybe the closest we ever got was probably like in the 80s, but for sure. Yeah, yeah, really strong first choice. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's my first choice. That put me in a bit <laughs> of a dilemma, really. Um, I mean, you had to have expected it. Yeah, I, I did. I did, but I'm still torn between a couple of names for okay. my first choice. I know. No, no, just just so you guys know, I have a list of 15 names. 15 names. I've and... got 11 names written down. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. My, I have my 14, first... I think, if I count them right. <laughs> a lot to choose from. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Okay. 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 Right. My first pick. Is, is Jay Cargill. Wow. Okay. I know. Interesting. I, I know. I toyed with it for a bit because I thought I could go with another name. And then my it's, show... It's is... nothing to do with that she's in WWE now. <laughs> no, <laughs> my, my show is, as you, yeah. if you tune in to the podcast, you'll realize from last week, my show is all about star power yeah. for my brand. Money drawing power. Now, obviously, Jade is green at the moment. She isn't established mm. into that star yet. But I think there's some serious potential and she could draw a shit ton of money for me in the future. You know, in, you know what? Interesting thing, you like, didn't pick two that I thought you would then. Uh, I know. And I just, think I know the two that you're talking about. <laughs> I just want to add something about Jay Cargill is that charisma and personality and character work is very difficult to teach. Either you have it or you don't have it. Absolutely. So wrestling, you can progress. If you put the work, you can become good eventually. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, the it factor that Jade Carhill has, you cannot teach that. That is exactly it. She walks For into sure. a room and everybody just stops and looks at her and thinks... Jesus Christ, this is a star in the making. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, for sure. I think a very few wrestlers in general have kind of like improved in that regard. Like someone that I think improved in that regard since they started is probably Bobby Lashley. For like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's harder to do. It is possible. It's the same. Very hard to do. It's the same like Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. he has become the character. And yeah. once he becomes the character, the wrestling becomes a little bit of secondary. I know people don't like that, but mm-hmm. you have to have the character plus the wrestling to have one of the greatest of all time. So like Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels is the one of the greatest wrestlers, but being a dick and having that character and then being the newfound Christian and you know, everything about Shawn Michaels as a personality works. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, makes sense. Fully makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, Rohit, what's your first pick? Um, I'm gonna go with someone a bit more out there, but I'm gonna go with Julia. Fuck. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Julia. Like keeping Damn my it. trend of like good workers. She has great personality, star powers. Well, obviously not to higher level yet, but she has the potential and. Uh, Keeps my like theme of like good work, rage of wrestlers that can do. Like, I'm dying to see her. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying to see her in one of the biggest ones because I think mm-hmm. Julia 
has all the potentials to be one of the biggest stars for in sure. wrestling. Yeah, and she's for very sure. young. She's very and yeah. she was she was number two on the PWI women's two fifty as well. For anyone yeah. who keeps yeah. an eye on that. For sure. And yeah, and just like it keeps with my international flair. Like she's um half Italian, half Japanese, born in the UK. Weird combination, but yeah. You so, love that. You exactly. love that. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like it fits perfectly. And like that picture I saw of it, like from one of the monthly pro wrestling co- like her standing next to Naito, just like lose charisma, it just was perfect fit. So yeah, I'll have to great agree pick, Julia. great pick. Yeah, yeah. Right, Alfonso, mm-hmm. what's your second pick? My second pick is the women wrestler that I love right now. Like I love Rhea Ripley, but I get excited about her work and everything. But there is one women wrestler right now that I have to see every single segment, every single yeah. thing that she does, I and I'm you. going down under because. Tits out and watch for the shoe. Tony Storm is my star. Yep, so so hundred percent. That makes sense. I think I I I think Tony, like we know that she can wrestle because we have seen her in the Indies. Mm-hmm. But I think the character work for her is amazing, like really really amazing. I just remember that in one show I don't remember for what company she arrived in a, a Suzuki. Costume, you remember that? Yeah, I remember. And it was in, was... I'm pretty sure it was Stardom, on one of the. Yeah, Halloween Stardom, yeah, yeah. It, Stardom yeah, yeah. it was Halloween for Stardom. Mm-hmm. And I think that show with all the costumes was great. Yeah. But Tony Storm arriving like that and knowing that she can have fun. 100%. I think it's one of the best things ever. And I love Tony Storm. Timeless Tony Storm. Timeless! <laughs> Timeless. <laughs> <laughs> Great Her character work has yeah. been pretty, pretty insane recently, hasn't it? Very, mm-hmm. very entertaining. For sure. Yeah. And there is that, I'm pretty sure there's that rivalry with Rhea Ripley again from NXT UK. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's why, you know? And right now, yeah. and right now I have Ripley and I have Tony. I love my show right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Two great picks there, for sure. Yeah. Right. So my second pick, I think it's probably one that you uh, have already predicted, Rohit. Hmm? My second pick is Charlotte Flair. Yeah. I had a again, feeling that one was coming, yeah. Yeah, again, I'm going with star power I and drawing power. Um, yeah. She is one of the household names of women's wrestling, has been for the past seven, eight years, probably. All her accomplishments that she's had, again, her big match, um sort of status, big WrestleMania matches. She's always there or thereabouts in the title picture. Some people definitely get pissed off with Charlotte Flair getting mm. handed opportunities, so to speak. Yeah. I think I think her star power mm-hmm. and her overall all-round yeah. ability as a wrestler mm. can't be de- denied, though. Yeah, I think it's a bit unfair, but like... I feel like it's similar to like the John Cena situation in a certain context. Like he can't control the booking. Like he would have loved probably to do a heel turn run at some point, but he kind of can't control what the company wants and the booking decision. But in terms of like ability, charisma, star power, selling tickets and merchandise, she's up there really. And I am a big fan of her. And obviously, you know. She's great. But, I like yeah, good, very athletic ball. Yeah. Yeah, you only have to say she's a flair. And that's yeah. it, I think. And yeah. you have to say two things about her. Is Charlotte Flair is a flair. And mm-hmm. the second thing is Woo <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Alfonso. And the third Thank thing you. is she is an El Idolo as well. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like 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 I'm just I'm just waiting for the day that Charlotte Flair goes crazy and starts wearing a mask and starts doing <laughs> Uracananas, you know, like John Cena yeah. in that match against CM Point yeah. that he was doing every single crazy stuff that he could do, like lucha things. Mm-hmm. And because how was the Callisto, the Callisto promo? 
he does yeah. very good lucha things. <laughs> I'm gonna go and do lucha things. <laughs> yeah, and I would love to see Charlo Flair do lucha things. <laughs> I think it would be cool if, like, in some crazy world, Charlo Flair eventually leaves WWE, comes with Andrade, and they're just like, Go everywhere, Japan, Mexico. But with a mask. But with a with mask, a mask and, without uh, yeah. both. They could have alternate characters like the return of La Sombra. And then oh my God. Play, I don't know. Has you like, know, wait, 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 wait. La wait. Flair or something. I don't know. No, 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 no. I have it. I have it. Go on. La Sombra is the shadow, you know? Yeah. In, yeah. So Flair is the light. La Luz. La Luz. So you have Charlo Flair in her like white robe, but with a white mask. And you have La Sombra with a black cape and a black mask. It could be a great tag team. That could work, yeah. That sounds awesome. And they have mixed tag team belts, I think, in Triple H. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. There you go. Charlotte Flair, if you're Book listening, it. that's an idea <laughs> for the end of your career. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a great way to go after you've done WWE. For sure, for and sure. And then you can always come back, last run in WWE. No, Before retired, listen, Hall of Fame. She, she's a flair. She's going to retire like five times and she's going to come back mm. five times and she's going to be wrestling like Mula at True. 80 years old. <laughs> Potentially, yeah, but she's I'm going to go. She wants to start a family, I guess. I don't know. She's going yeah. to go down to NXT and beat some 18 year old for a title just because she's a flair and she can do it, you know. Screw it. She's probably going to appear in TNA at some point as well. Why not? <laughs> she's going to end up being like a 25 time world champion at this point. We're going to have a Flair versus Okada at Wrestle Kingdom or something. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> there you go. Lots of Great. ideas for you there, Great. Charlotte Flair. Okay, Rohit, your turn. Um, I've gone with someone that might have been on your list, but I don't know if like it came towards the top, but I've gone with Mercedes Monet. Money, oh. money, money. Hey, yeah, bringing that money to SmackDown and the blue Good. brand. And yeah, I feel like she's just like has so much more to give, so much more potential. She seems to be having fun right now. Obviously, I know injury and she's a bit out right now. But she I, I think that's the, be- that's the biggest if with Mercedes Monet. Yeah. She needs to, to stay healthy. Yeah. Because she's a star in every way. But she needs to be consistent, and I think with the injury, she loses the hype, and she loses yeah. the like the steam behind all those pushes. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. But I, I do think like um, since she has left, more people are clamoring for her to return, and eventually, I think it will probably happen. She's still quite young, but I think she's a good worker, and she proved it against you know like outside of um, WWE that she can work and she can be good and. She can do that style if she needs to. So there was yeah. certainly yeah. loads of buzz when she uh, first appeared. Yeah, in uh, New, New Japan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's, again, and it's going to go crazy when she appears in AEW. Yeah, she. I think that's going to happen. I don't know full time, what not. Maybe like crossover show. Or like, but she's going to appear, and, and, and they're going will. to go crazy. Hundred percent, she will. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if she appears in TNA in the future, because obviously Trinity is there as well, and she has yeah. been backstage, so I'll be interested to see if she does. I don't think she wanted to appear straight away when Trinity went there. She didn't want to steal, like, the thunder, because obviously Mercedes Monet was probably always going to be the popular of the two, like, comparatively. But, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's why we haven't seen her yet on screen there. I think otherwise that may have already happened at some point, but... I, I think I think it'd be interesting to see what else she can do out there. So, but you you're going to have to pay her a lot of money just to get her there. Yeah, that's cool. I'll just take um some NXT funds away from you. I'll just go up top and call. How you. dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I know Dana, and he's got connection to Endeavor. Let's go. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, right now with my third pick, <laughs> you guys are going to be very scared because right now I have Rhea Ripley. I have mm-hmm. Tony Storm, and now I'm adding Jordan Grace. Oh, Ooh. okay. Um, Interesting. Because, because I think Jordan Grace is the greatest wrestler in TNA right now, women wrestler. I, I, know had a, I had That was my next day. That was a good one. I'm I think there are, I, glad someone picked that. I know there are other wrestlers in TNA that are very good. I'm not going to say the names because I don't want to give you ideas. Mm-hmm. But for me, Jordan Grace, like the physique, like the style of wrestling, 
I just want to see her beat the shit out of Rhea Ripley. You know, <laughs> her, her physique is insane, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. insane. Like, yeah. Just imagine, just imagine having a triple threat between her Rhea Ripley, as well, Tony yeah. Storm, and Georgian Grace. Like, I will be love. I will love that. Would that yeah. be your like main? main event women's feud with it Rhea Ripley and Jordan Grace no just wait to see two more uh... <laughs> <laughs> your turn right. my third Great, pick man. is I'm going to veer away from WWE mm-hmm. my third pick is Jamie Hayter Ooh. now she's been injured for quite a while now I think personally she was. She had the best run of any AEW Women's World Champion. I think she is one of those people that could easily be a top star in the future. I think she has pretty much yeah. everything at the moment. Just needs maybe a bit more experience in front of you know live crowds, big crowds, a bit more. She's got all the tools. She's quite big and strong. She just wrestles really smoothly. And I think Jamie Hayter, if she didn't get injured, that Britt Baker Jamie Hayter match, if they were planning it, would have been huge for her. I think, and I think when she comes back, she's still going to be one of the biggest stars in their division. I really, I really like her. I think she's got a great, great future moving forward. Yeah, uh, I love Jamie Hayter as well. I think she was starting to develop a character when she got injured, and I think she could be like a champion again in AEW and she can have a very nice run with uh, Britt Baker as the baby face or, or the heel. I don't know which dynamic you will go with it, but I think both of those wrestlers are very, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I hope they can sort out the women's division in AEW because I still yeah, believe it's hopefully. pretty poorly booked in general. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, and they have so much talent, like Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, we've already mentioned. There are so many others as well. And, like, I worry about, you know, we've mentioned Mercedes Monet. I worry about her going to AEW, what they're going to do with her, because they just mm. don't seem to use anyone right in that division. Yeah. 100%, yeah. So, yeah. That's why Jamie I don't Hayter want her to go permanently there. Yeah, appearances here and there, but don't sign full time. But I think it's going to happen, isn't it? It's like a no brainer. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but, uh, yeah Jamie, Jamie Hayter and Jay Cargill are going to mm-hmm. be like my future stars, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're going to draw me some big, big money. <laughs> For sure. Right. Rohit, your right. third pick. So those two were very high on my picks, the last two picks. So that's a bit of a spanner in my work a little bit, but not too <laughs> worried. <laughs> Jordan Grace, I appreciate how fond of picking her because I, I think she's like, I guess people are aware of her, but at the same time, she's not talked enough, about enough because I feel like she's so unique out there. Like, just like you've mentioned before, her physique and everything. And something we haven't seen is like a monster heel run from her. And I feel like that could be crazy, but... Because of that, I think I had to pull out a bit more of a big gun. So I've gone with a safer option. I've gone with Becky Lynch. Oh, you bastard. That was my <laughs> pick. Yeah, it had to be done. Like, I need to get one of the big names before they're all gone, I'm afraid. And yeah, like I said, she is... uh, Jordan Grace went, which was a bit unexpected. I thought that got a bit later. You know, you know what? You know what? Go, yeah. I, had, I had Becky Lynch before Jordan Grace. Yeah. And I was I was thinking about the possibilities of the matches, mm-hmm. and if I have yeah. Becky Lynch, she has to be one of the tops in mm-hmm. my in my roster. And my two last picks are going to be very different, and I think they could be also main eventers. So that's mm-hmm. why I didn't choose Becky Lynch because I think like she's going to go down in history in the Mount Rushmore of women wrestling, like. All the run as the man in WWE was great. Yeah, for sure. I think I think she's becoming a better wrestler with every year. Like the matches she's been having in NXT have been great, to be honest. And I'm just waiting for her to come back to the main event in WWE and do something great again. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. I 100%. think Becky Lynch has been probably one of the biggest stars, male or female. 
in for sure. WWE for probably like the last five years, I'd say. Yeah, ever, that, ever yeah. since that moment when she invaded Raw and got her nose bloodied, she's just skyrocketed. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, and that's why I picked her. Really great match. Uh, again, international flair, targeting the international market as well. And like I said, she can go with any of them. I've seen Becky Lynch versus Julia, like proper gang at it right in the face, like each other. Like I think just magic waiting to happen, really. So yeah, it's a good. It's a, it's such a solid pick. You can't go wrong with Becky Lynch. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Alfonso, what's your fourth pick? Okay. This one is going also to surprise you, Rohit. Okay. Because I'm going with Kairi Sane. Ah, nice. Oh, that's a bit of a curveball. Because, nice. because in the end... That was my next pick, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this, this is my payback yeah. for Gunter. This is my payback it's for okay. Gunter. It's okay. Because Let's be explore options. <laughs> I, I want I want my, my roster to be the best wrestler in terms of wrestling. And I think mixing styles that have never been mixed or we haven't mm-hmm. really seen mixed, that's yeah. what I want. I want novelty. I want new stars. I want new pads. That's why I put Okada as a heel with Paul Hink. I'm sorry, that's a spoiler for the first episode. <laughs> that, I've already mentioned you picked Okada. That was your first pick. Yeah, but I, 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 was, going, I was going to tell that he's with a new manager as a heel and for me Kerry Sane is amazing like I love it I love her in in, in WWE and I think that's the best elbow ever the insane elbow Mm -hmm. I think and I love Randy Savage I wrote I love CM Punk and I think Kerry Sane those are the three elbows that are going to go down in history like the best Elbows, you know, diving elbows ever. Mm-hmm. Not Shawn Michaels. No, I will put CM Punk first. I will put Randy Savage first, and I will put Carrie Sane first because the height, <laughs> the height that she that she gets nah. when she jumps is amazing. I'm for sorry. me, it's got, for me the best elbow is gonna be the leader of the Fred Club, uh, Satoshi Kojima, the lazy elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? Just because he hit. <laughs> Just because he hit uh, CM Punk in the balls with that elbow, <laughs> maybe, maybe. That was a bit funny, actually. I looked at it, I was like, ooh. <laughs> that was a bit funny, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, great, def- pick, great pick. Thank you. Definitely a bit of a curveball pick, but a good one, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Right, my fourth pick. I'm struggling now. I've got so many names left, and I really don't know who to choose. <laughs> I am going to go with Julia Hart. Oh, nice. That's that's a bigger a bigger curveball than mine. Yeah. I mean, it it goes a little bit against the mold of my show, picking like drawing power superstars. But I I guess again I'm thinking for the future like with Jade and with Jamie Hater. I love what Julia Hart has done this year. I mean, it could work also because of um, just the nature of her character work of being like this more dark entity. She can portray that character. So, like, it could catch on and make her into a star or at least someone unique enough to stand out from the stars. You know? Yeah, I th- that's what I think she's yeah. got. She's got that ability to stand out, and she's proven that this last year. Mm-hmm. And, like, the transformation from cheerleader to dark sorceress has been incredible and her ring work is like so solid for such a young age that's you know only something? gonna get better what yeah. what i'm seeing with this series of episodes that we have that we're doing right now with the mm-hmm. roster like when you think about aw normally you don't think about characters about progression yeah. of a character but this is like the fifth pick between the first show and the second show, that we're talking about a character that has shown us personality and charisma and has developed as a huge superstar. And I think Julia Hart has shown that. Like, It's very interesting that she's not having a title feud or anything like that, but she's becoming one of the most intriguing superstars in AEW right now. And with the right booking, she can become like a contender for the title. And I think that's what you're looking for your show. 
you're looking for drawing power, but let's remember that the money's on the chase. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You don't always need superstars. Sometimes you need somebody that can become a superstar. And I and think Julia Hart is one of the dark horses to become a huge superstar. Com- couldn't agree more, Alfonso. And she's so young. She has so much time to hone her craft and become that superstar. For sure. Huge, huge potential for me. Yeah. Right, Rohi, what's your fourth pick? Uh, my fourth pick, let's have a look what I was thinking of doing. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, again, someone many people may have not heard too much of, or depending on who's listening. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> I'm going to go with the How weird. the Queen's <laughs> Quest, Utami Hayashi Tashita. Oh. I think I pronounced it wrong. Hayashi Shita, there we go. That's the right word. Yeah. I can't Again, say I've heard of her. Uh, you should check her out. She just has that great personality. Like, up there. it's like, in terms of character, in terms of personality, it's like a kind of a mix of like a flamboyant Naito with a bit of Okada in there as well. In terms of like the persona that she has, but she's great in the ring. She's a good wrestler. She's only 25 as well, very young. And she's just great. And I think she's going to be like the next big stardom female athlete. Like that's pe- going to be on people's radar a lot soon. So that's, that's why I've gone with her. Someone that can work. That's just great in the ring and has potential to grow. And yeah, that's why. And again, I've- more international flavor. Yeah, it's for definitely sure. been a theme of your, of your picks. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Like, to Triple H to must run. love you because he's right now doing all the PLEs in Europe and things like that. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's cool. <laughs> he would go straight to your roster, Rohit, for all those <laughs> big matches. <laughs> yep. And if Triple H happy, then I win, I guess. Because <laughs> of um, a certain someone <laughs> that will not be talked about. <laughs> 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 Right, we are on to our last picks now. So, let's make it a good one, Alfonso. This is your last chance. Who's your final pick? My final pick is one that was going to be my second pick, then my third pick, then my fourth pick. And I haven't chosen her because it was like, if no one pick it, I'm going to pick her last. But it's not because she's not better than all my first four picks. I think she could become one of the biggest ones. And I think we talk about a little bit about her, and it's Bianca Belair. Oh, that was and my last pick. You know, you know why <laughs> Bianca Belair? I think it's the fair reason to say that. I don't know if she's going to be a full John Cena character. Like right now, people are getting mad with Bianca Belair because it's Bianca Belair wins lol era right now. But it's not that bad. It's not, yeah. it's not that bad, but she can become that bad. And I'm afraid of that. But I would love her to, to have her in the Bobby Lashley Street Profits new faction and go against Rhea Ripley. Oh, you that'd know? be awesome. As a heel as well. As a heel, yeah. Oh, can you imagine I, her walking out, strutting with like a pair of sunglasses on? I, you know, like the first time that I knew Bianca Belair was the sassy... Bianca Belair in NXT when Charlotte Flair came down and she goes you don't even go here to Charlotte Flair when she was trying to go against Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania and I think the yeah. sassiness of that character is missing for me like, she's, got, she's mm-hmm. definitely got that in her hasn't she? Yeah, I think, because... I think she can be an absolute arsehole I think there's a massive arsehole in there <laughs> somewhere and I want to Please... see it Please, please don't cut that out audio. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> don't use, don't use that phrase that Alex just said about the asshole, big asshole of Bianca Valera. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like for me, for real, is like WWE sometimes has this problem with baby faces. Like we're right now trying to see that great area, and I think Seth Rollins talk about that. Like. There is not good or evil. There is that great area, that tweener. I don't like to use that term, but 
he's like more real, you know. And I think Bianca Belair can become a little bit more like that. But that's why I need her to lose a crown uh, jewel because I want her to become mad about the power that she's losing yeah. by now being a champion, you know. Yeah, I completely mm -hmm. agree. And I think she's, sh she's shown like snippets of that this year already. But I, yeah, I think at the moment she has everything. She has the charisma and she's great on the mic. I think she smiles too much. And obviously the hair twirling is obviously her thing. But I agree with Alfonso. I think we yeah. can lose those things and just bring out this angry, like bitter person. And I think Bianca Belair would be compelling to watch. And you know why I choose her? Like, Ultimate, because one of my dream matches is Jordan Grace against Bianca Belair. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, 100%. That would be really good. Yeah, I love my roster. So, up to you, Alex. Yeah, well, <laughs> you've just completely fucked me over with that last pick. That's why... <laughs> you, you know why? That's my revenge. You, <laughs> because I didn't understand I could pick CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> that was your own fault, Alfonso. I think before I we, when, when we get to the tag teams, I think we need to read the rules at the start of the episode before we pick our teams. One hundred percent. We're yes. gonna get everything cleared up. Yeah, and we're going we and, 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 and I'm going to put the rules, but I'm just yeah. going to say them in Spanish. And if you don't understand them, it's not my problem. <laughs> not <Touché. hablar> español. <laughs> Touche, then I'll speak them in German. Oh damn! How long is this dia? In good? <laughs> it gets good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't contribute anything other than English. <laughs> you see, international flavor, my friend. That's it it. Is. Multilingual. That's what it is. <laughs> right, oh, no. my last pick now. I need to. I need to reset here. Oh god, Alfonso's kind of ruined that for me. Right. Yay! <laughs> <sighs> I am going to go. With Chris Statlander. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting pick. I mean, Alfonso robbed me of my pick. <laughs> but I think Statlander, <laughs> again, she's very injury prone, which is an issue. Mm. But she has the size and the strength mm. and kind of like everything... WWE, especially like the Raw brand, is after in terms of look, just because she's just so big and strong, and mm. that's what they like. And you can see her becoming a big star if she can stay injury free and develop a bit of a character. Her ring work kind of speaks for itself because she can just come across as this dominating brute in a match. Yeah, I need um, to say something. Okay, I don't like that pick. Why? Because I know what people say about uh, her, but like I don't see it. Really? Yeah, when she came back, she didn't click for me. Like I th the first run before the injury, she was clicking with me, and right yeah. now she's not clicking with me, and I don't know why. I think they're better picks right now for her. I think she has the potential, but right now I don't see it. I I think it's character work. I don't think she went back before her injury she was the, what was she, the galaxy's greatest alien or something Yeah, like that. something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. She had a defined character. This time she hasn't really, she's just this sort of generic big baby exactly. face. That's and exactly what I'm saying. I think on my show, I'm going to mould her a character. Yeah. Maybe even like a big brutish heel that just sort of goes around destroying jobbers and getting over that way. Mm -hmm. And just fleshing her character out. Like, I don't think AEW have done that, which is maybe why you feel that way, Alfonso. A little bit. Yeah, but on my show, we're not going to have any of that. She's going to have a defined character and hopefully, again another mega star in the making. But there you have it. That was my last pick. Rohit, yeah. your final pick this week. So, um, this is interesting because I've had a role in mind that I want to fulfill. 
but the picks kind of didn't favor me in this sense, so it kind of got away. So what I had in mind was someone to be a bit more of a, like, bigger monster bruiser kind of role. So I've got, like, yeah. three names in my mind I'm trying to think of. So so do I go with the unknown? Do I go with the safe? Or do I go somewhere in between? Hmm. Interesting. I think your you, show you calls went... for something in between. <laughs> you went with the you went with the unknown before, mm-hmm. so maybe go with the safe pick this one. But you also went for Becky Lynch, which technically is a safe pick. Yeah, if that's true. Yeah. So in that case, <laughs> kind of narrowed it down. So I'm gonna go with Marina. What's her name? Marina Shafir. Is that how you pronounce? Marina it? Shafir. Yeah. Marina oh no. Shafir. Yeah. What? Like, yeah, because she's going to fulfill that more of a bruiser monster kind of but role. That I would, did you like, hear that promo? Please. Which promo? Which the one? promo where she's with the hat inside the ring and it's worse <laughs> than than Michael McKillicutty, the second coming, the I'm coming, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> the, ge- the genesis of the genesis. McKillicutty. Yeah, I think that Marina Shafir can cut a promo <laughs> to save her life. I think she's yeah. only doing wrestling because Roderick Strong is doing wrestling. But <laughs> M- and maybe Al- Alfonso is just shat okay. on both of our last picks. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, but hey, no, he, you're entitled to your the thing. Alfonso. Here's the thing that you don't know. I've been speaking to someone that works well with someone that you have that you know. No. You don't want to spoil <laughs> and. I think they would fit perfectly. That's <laughs> only if I let him go to your <laughs> show. I mean, I can call Triple A, JK, um, Craig, and make it happen. So. No, because she's, she, <laughs> he's down there. He's down there in Triple H action nonstop <laughs> company. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, for interest, the unknown pick I was going to go with was Camille. Okay. And the most safe pick I was thinking of was Shayna Baszler. Okay, okay, okay. So it, um, it was a bit limited, but I think I did all right. So I just want okay, to say some names that were yeah. left out. Yeah. Because what I'm thinking about the roster being mm-hmm. so great is because women wrestler right now, the, the, the woman wrestling industry right now is amazing. So we have mm-hmm. people like Trinity. We have people yeah. like Roxanne Perez. We mm-hmm. have people like Lyra Valkyria. NXT, we have EO Sky. We have oh, fucking yeah. Bailey. No one say Bailey. No one say Bailey. D- Diana, Diana Perazzo. Diana Perazzo. Liv Morgan. Brian. Yeah, Britt Baker. Yeah. Britt Baker. Yeah. And someone you might be familiar with, Flammer. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was considering her for a bit more of that lucha, but I just didn't. I haven't watched enough of her to really judge her. <laughs> I didn't yeah, want to I go think... with a name that's on the list of IOT wrestlers this year and be like, yeah, I'll pick her, even though I don't know much about her. <laughs> no one said Asuka. Asuka. Yeah, I was Asuka. considering Asuka as well for a month or so. I'm like, I already had a Jap- two Japanese superstars in a sense, so I didn't want to go that can, route. Can I, but, yeah. can I just say something? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I, I don't know if she was an eligible pick, but n- none of us and it's just come to my mind. None of us have said Ronda Rousey. I think I will never she... pick her. I will never pick her. I was considering her, but at the same time, like, I wasn't the biggest fan. She did have the star pound, that monster quality I... that I could have used. Mm. But well... for me, for me, Ronda Rousey had that perfect match, the first yeah. match with the tag team with 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 Kurt Angle against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, but... that was awesome. But mm-hmm. after that. She don't. She doesn't understand that fighting in wrestling is very different than fighting in UFC. Yeah, and it doesn't look look real when she's wrestling mm-hmm. because sure. she's trying to make it look real, like UFC fighting, and it doesn't look real. Like I only like like two matches of Ronda Rousey hold run in WWE. There's a very few people that can make that sort of wrestling work. And I think, like, she needs to train under someone. Like, could you imagine, like, her being taught by, like, Suzuki on how to actually translate her skills and 
I think she has to go down and do a, a dead match and then come back. Maybe, yeah. Or and Ken the thing Shamrock. is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think to answer your question, I think she would have probably been eligible because she did make like a like return for charity in like an impromptu match, and she has been announced for uh, for Revolver no? show. Yeah, was it Revolver? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you think about it. <laughs> I guess she's doing the indies in a weird way, which I guess works for her because she doesn't really need the money at the at this point. And that's what they want to see. Money. That's what they want to see. Yeah. I want to see if she real if you if she really likes this this yeah. company. If she really like mm-hmm. like this industry, I want to I see mean, her. She's like... a fan of the industry. Whether or not she enjoys working on it remains to be seen. But and I think that's two very yeah. different things. And and it and like when you hear a wrestler talk about the industry yeah you have to feel the passion behind it and sometimes when Ronda Rousey talks about the industry I don't feel that passion behind her right now she's doing the indie so let's hope she can find that passion again and show us that passion because I think she can be herself a bit more she doesn't have to be the Ronda Rousey she can do random stuff and it could still work she can throw things to see what happens and if it doesn't work the internet, like a couple of pictures and small reels, and like over a hundred people are in the crowd at the time will know about it that it didn't work. But she can try something else the next show. So yeah, it's interesting to see what she does if she continues. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it didn't really work out. I don't think in general for Ronda Rousey, but mm-hmm. probably would have worked best for my show because she still regardless yeah. of what happened she still has that drawing power yeah for sure for, for sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so sure. Rohit do you want to run down the picks quickly yep so for Alfonso who picked first for his NXT he picked Rhea Ripley Tony Storm Jordan Grace Kyrie Sane and Bianca Belair what a roster <laughs> that's a great roster yeah for Raw for Alex we've got Jade Cargill Charlotte Flair Jamie Hayter, Julia Hart, and Chris Statlander. Stars Mead, and future Mead. stars. Me, Yeah. Mead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for myself on SmackDown, I have Julia, Mercedes Monet, Becky Lynch, Utami Hayashi Shita, and Marina Shafir. Three stars. Yeah. Only because he's in, in the Tokyo Dome, your shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I could do, if I was actually to be creative on this. I could actually do something interesting with Maria Shafi. I can just make her like like a monster, I think, even if she <laughs> doesn't know how to cut a promo. But I think technically she's quite certain. She's probably better than Ronda in ring, so... Yeah, for sure. So, same, but, same with me, yeah. with Chris Statlander, so you can get yeah. lost, Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> Our think... versions, fictionally, will be better than... Um, your real Rhea Ripley version. Let's <laughs> just, just, just listen to me. Mm-hmm. Next week is tag teams, and mm-hmm. I think it's going to be one of the funnest shows because last week was great. This week was yeah. amazing. And I think mm-hmm. next week is going to be even, even greater. And it's very yeah. fun to do it with you guys and to speak For and sure. to see how you see wrestling as a whole. And I hope the people that listen to us can play along and try to create their own ultimate yeah. roster and tell us what we got wrong and tell us like who won in the end. Yeah, yeah we'll put, for sure. put all that on Facebook and you guys can pick the winner of the, the best roster overall. And exactly like Alfonso said, you know, what, you know, give us your feedback. What would be your foot top five picks for male and female? And um, yeah, those are first two parts of a, our three part show done next mm-hmm. week. The last part, is going to be tag teams. It could get very interesting. We're going yeah. to go through all the rules during the week. We're going to explain them all because it it <laughs> it could be quite convoluted, but yeah. it's going to be fun nonetheless. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. we will uh, we will post this episode up on YouTube. Please go and watch our previous one where we did our top five male picks, and don't forget next week our top five yeah. tag team picks um, should be fun, yeah. guys. So. And yeah. I'll let you know, Alex, about any last-minute rule changes before. And Alfonso, tough luck. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, uh, join in the fun and come and see us mm-hmm. next week. It's going to be a good yeah. one. Um, please 
follow us on all our social media platforms as always guys it really helps us again like and subscribe to our youtube channel that also really really helps the page we greatly appreciate it um alfonso rohi thank you so much again this week can't wait for next week's show yeah i agree thank you appreciate it pleasure and before we go speaking of tag teams super junior tag league final this weekend if you're interested check that out and also, if you love good interviews about wrestling and not wrestling related, you have Chad Rollins talking in the mythical kitchen interview about his last meal and everything like oh, that. Yeah. And, and it's like one hour long, but it's an amazing one hour talking with Chad Rollins. And if you like the guy, you will love the interview. Go check that out as well. There you go. A couple of plugs to end the show. <laughs> great, great job. Great job as always, guys. And we will see you on the next one. Ciao. 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 See you. Ciao.